Jesus died to save the entire world. Today, he's training us in grace so that we can go out and influence someone else's life. That's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision and you help us in so many ways to reach those who are searching for hope in the midst of darkness. Thank you for empowering us to expand God's kingdom worldwide. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CrefloDollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. I'm about to talk about something that I don't have to ask you to raise your hands. Maybe you don't know it, but everybody in here at one time or another has been impacted and affected by something called approval addiction. To be this kind of addict could derail the very call of God that he's placed on your life. It can also cause mental health issues. It can cause you to be so focused on the wrong thing that you find yourself at a place in your life where you're ready to end it all those irritations, those fear of rejection, the depression, the heaviness that most of us carry, it's rooted in this deal of being addicted to approval. Your teenagers suffer grossly if they're not getting the approval necessary through social media, through the number of likes and so forth that I have come to recognize that our society is a society filled with a bunch of addicts that are addicted to validation and to approval. My text for this morning starts off with showing you a man who did that. First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 24 and in 1 Samuel chapter 15, this is the story where Samuel gave a word of the Lord to Saul. And he told Saul to destroy and to kill everything, every animal, every person in the tribe, everything was supposed to be killed. And Saul was so addicted to people that he chose to do what pleased the people instead of doing what pleased God. Let me show you what happened here. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 24, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voices. He says, I have sinned. I was afraid of the people, and so I gave in to them, another translation says. One of the things you see here is that King Saul lost his relationship with God. He lost his kingdom. He lost his relationship with his son, Jonathan. The Bible says that Samuel said, because you rejected the Lord, the Lord has rejected you. And why? This is how he explains it. He said, I was afraid of the people, so I gave in to them. But listen, he was the king. He had nothing physically to fear from them. They adored him. In fact, they, some were actually idolized him as king. He sought their approval so much that he wouldn't make a decision he thought might reap their disapproval. No one had threatened him. He's the king. No one was asking him to do anything. And at this point, it was all in his head. But what he thought could happen dominated him. His approval addiction caused him to act foolishly and ultimately compromised his future. If you continue to read the story about Saul, Demons that got into his soul, and eventually he died. 
Now, look at John chapter 12. Lost everything. His, 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 his entire future derailed because of approval addiction. John chapter 12, verse 42 and 43, he says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. 43, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Of course, another translation says, many believed in Jesus, but they would not admit it for fear of the Pharisees. So there were a lot of the leader, Jewish leaders, that believed in Jesus, but they were afraid to admit it because they feared what the other Jewish uh, uh, Pharisees would say. The Bible says that they were more concerned to have the approval of man than the approval of God. So when Jesus was here as a living, breathing Messiah, I mean, he was compelling. Nobody, nobody would doubt that. He was very compelling. Many more believed in him than the ones who actually, you know, followed him. They believed his claims, uh, then, but they wouldn't follow him. And why? because they were afraid of the disapproval of the Jews. They were more concerned to have the approval of men than to have the approval of God. And their approval addiction changed their destiny, and it cost them their eternity. Changed their destiny. Those who, who believed but wouldn't follow because of approval addiction, it changed their destiny. Approval addiction has far-reaching consequences. In the moment, it lowers our self-esteem. It hinders our witness. It makes God's plan for us impossible to carry out because we're so addicted to the approval of others. And long-term, it can cost us everything. And when we seek the approval of the group, we will always find it to be fickled and changing. Security and well-being are never found in chasing the approval of the crowd. It steals our eternal peace, and it robs us of our relationship with God. Living for the audience of one. Living for the audience of one is the way to satisfaction. It's the way to strength. It's the way to significance. And when you can lay your head on your pillow at night sensing that he is pleased, your sleep will be sweet and your daylight hours are going to be filled with purpose because when you go to bed, you go to bed knowing that God approves of you. So, that's an unusual way to give a text, but I wanted to show you that this is not just, you know, a therapeutic sermon. This is a serious issue in the Word of God. If you live under a burden of guilt, if you live under a burden of shame, if you live under a burden of condemnation, feeling insecure, feeling unrighteous, feeling unworthy, with low self-esteem and low self-worth, if you're having the excessive need for approval, validation, and acceptance from others, you are most likely an addict addicted to approval because you fear rejection, you fear judgment, you fear disapproval from others to the point that you try to avoid rocking the boat at any cost because of that approval addiction. So let's get involved in this right now. What is an approval addict? How would you define an approval addict? It's someone who relies on approval of others for their self-esteem and their self-value, their worth. If you are relying on others and their approval of you to value yourself, to have self-esteem, to have self-worth, you most likely are addicted to approval. Approval addiction is the excessive need for approval. It's the excessive need for validation and acceptance from others. 
Approval addiction can be very damaging to a person's self-esteem, and it can be very damaging to your self-worth, and it can lead to anxiety, it can lead to depression, and it can lead to other mental health issues. That's how serious this is. And before you're so quick to say you don't have one, think about why is it that you feel so bad when somebody didn't approve of your address, or approve of your comment, or approve of your husband or wife that you decided to marry, or approve of the decision that you made on certain things. I am here this morning to say don't believe the lie. Don't believe the lie that in order to feel good about yourself, you have to be approved by certain people. Don't believe that lie. You do not have to have somebody's approval in order to feel good about yourself. I don't need somebody's approval for me to do what God told me to do. And there's a lot of approving, uh, there's a lot of approval addicts in the pulpit that I won't say certain things because you might not approve of it. How many you know that ain't me? Why what? So, the lie is, if I am approved by others, then I have value. That's the lie. If other people approve of me, then I have a high self-esteem. Then I have value. You know where that's going. The preoccupation with how other people view us and seeking their approval can so consume us that it becomes an addiction. I'm so consumed about what you think about me. I used to go places and preach, and after I preach, I, I needed to ask several people, how did I do? How did you think they do it? What was going on here? I was looking for approval to feel good about what I, what I preached. There were certain people that I knew and people that I respected and honored. I, I was so working hard for their approval. Oh, my God, what do I have to do to, to get their approval? Oh, they're not inviting me to their church because they don't approve of me. And then I'm working hard to get somebody's approval. How many of you know you're working so hard to get somebody's approval, you're no longer thinking about the approval that God has given you, and you'll find yourself not carrying out what God wants you to carry out. Let me show you a couple of scriptures here. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10 in the NLT. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10 in the NLT. This is strong. You know, kids wanting approval for, from certain gangs or certain people, and, 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 and if I can get their approval, I have value. You want to know why our society is the way it is right now? Because we're working hard. That, you know, our value is based on who approves of me. He says in verse 10, Paul is speaking here, and the Apostle Paul said, obviously I am not trying to win the approval of people. <laughs> I mean, because Paul said some heavy stuff. He's like, obviously, you know I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but I'm trying to win the approval of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. You can't make pleasing people your goal. What your goal should be is the will of God for your life. I want to know what the will of God for my life is. And then go with me to St. John in the NLT, St. John chapter 5, verse 41 through 44. St. John chapter 5, 40, and, and I'm sharing all these scriptures at the beginning because once I get started, I want you to know this is a biblical issue as well as a societal issue. It's big in our society. And I tell you, when I say that the greatest deliverance you can ever have is deliverance from people, I absolutely mean that. I am so free, it don't even make no sense. It really doesn't make any sense at all. I was in New York in, in one of our major conventions with a flower shirt on and some loud jeans. I, I'm, I don't need somebody's approval for, for me to wear what I want to wear. Now, at one time I did. I, one time, I, I wore the bishop's collar around my neck, and there ain't nothing wrong with under that. I'm just saying, for me, 
to try to get my value and my self-esteem based on somebody's approval of me was distracting me from, you know, the purpose for which I was called and the purpose for why I was supposed to be there. And I'm wondering how many of you are being distracted from the call of God, the will of God, the path that God wants you to go down, the plan of God, because somebody somewhere uh, uh, is, you, you're, you're allowing them and their approval of you to determine your value. I don't need my family's approval. I don't need my children's approval. I don't, I don't need, I don't need to, to do what God called me to do. No. And we work hard to get our children's approval, to get our family's approval. We, you work hard to do that. You don't even think it's there, but it's there. You're worried and you're miserable as a parent because they won't give you their approval. I don't need their approval to do what God told me to do. I did what God told me to do. I did it the best I knew how. And I am not waiting for the rest of my life to see if you're going to approve of what I did. Because it, it distracts me from being who I need to be. And no, they guess what happens? Shame comes, condemnation comes. All those things come because you're not getting the approval that you hear other people give. You're not getting that, that same approval. Oh, they magnify this guy. Oh, he's awesome. Oh, they're that. And you're wanting that approval too. And when you don't get it, you become distracted and could end up losing the very thing that God gave you to bless you because you're so hungry for somebody's approval. That's an addict. May not be with, with marijuana, may not be with different drugs, but you're an addict of the worst kind, an approval addict. And God wants you to be free from that today, praise God. He wants you to walk out of here today believing that you have value, believing that He has already approved of you. And if He has already approved, if, if God has already approved of you, 
You don't need nobody else's approval. Do what God told you to do. I can't tell you how free I am. I'm so free, I can teach this to you today. It beat the snot out of me. And, and listen, I'm not perfectly there where this is concerned. I find myself like, uh-oh, what is that? Up, up, up. I, I, I feel like I need their approval. I need, I need their approval of me in order for me to have value. No. Look what he says in verse 41. This is so awesome. He said, your approval means nothing to me because I know you don't have God's love within you. See, you're trying to get approval from people who don't care. And that's why you try to buy something you can't afford. <laughs> Trying to get approval from somebody that don't care, spending money to try to buy something that you can't afford, just so somebody can say you're successful. You buy a great, nice car to sit, so somebody say you're successful, but they don't know how bad you're feeling. That car is hurting you. It hurts when you drive that car because you got to pay this much money per month. You're paying more money for that car, than, and you could be living, you could have a roof over your head, but, you're, but you, 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 you did something foolish because you wanted to be valued by somebody who don't even care. They ain't got no love for you. Wow. He says, he says, your, your, your approval of me means nothing because I know you don't have God's love within you. For I have come to you in my Father's name, and you have rejected me, Jesus said. Yet if others come in their own name, you gladly welcome them. And that's what it looks like. You're, you're facing the deal of, Lou, they're giving their approval to somebody else but they won't give their approval to men, then you start, you start working for it. You start working for it. Listen, I know everybody don't love me and don't like me, and I'm good with that. But there was a time I had this weird idea that I can get everybody to love and like me. That is insane. <laughs> you ever put something on social media and you expect for everything to be positive? There's always going to be somebody out there don't you dare put something up there and say, how do you like my sweater? Oh, that's nice. Oh, that beautiful. Oh, you look like a china cabinet with that sweater on. <laughs> For I've come to you in my Father's name, and you've rejected me. Yet, in, yet if others come in their own name, you gladly welcome them. No wonder you can't believe. For you gladly honor each other but you don't care about the honor that comes from the one who alone is God. I'm telling you, this is a big issue here. Now look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 through 6 in the New Living Translation. 1 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 6. We'll, we'll, we'll get into how this stuff operates, but I'm just showing you how we kind of missed it throughout the Scripture. It's just all over the Scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 6, he says, So you can see we were not preaching with any uh, decent or impure motives or trickery. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. I say, I say, our purpose is to please God and not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Oh, my goodness. Never once did we try to win you with flattery, as you well know, and God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friends just to get your money. As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. We want human praise. We want to be able to make a rap song. We want human praise. We want to be able to get the nicest tennis shirt. We want human praise. 
We want to get the nicest house. We want human praise. And that is something that is just, just in our society big time to where we will pretend that we're something that we're not so we can get human praise.